Thank you so much, Casetify, for sponsoring this video. My sister first introduced Casetify to me back in 2011 when it was first founded, and we've tried out so many of their phone cases. So I'm super excited to be collaborating with them today. I recently ordered these three beautiful ultra compostable cases. They just make me feel so calm inside and so happy, so bright. I love how slim and sleek these phone cases are. They are made out of bamboo and plant fibers and are printed with eco-friendly ink. But at the end of its life, I can go ahead and compost it in my homemade compost pile. Casetify also created the iPhone 14 Impact Series, which is made of 65% recycled and plant-based materials. This is thanks to the Recasetify program, where you can return your old phone cases and have them upcycled to make new phone cases. While there are so many prints to choose from, you can also customize your phone case. So in this picture, Marika and I first went to meet Maple and adopted her from Chance's Rescue. Every time I look at this photo, it just makes me smile. This was before we adopted our second puppy, Maple's brother, from that same rescue. And so I have him on my lock screen and I will have to place another order and get an updated phone case with all four of us. I also love pairing my phone with the case to buy phone strip with card. I think it's super cute and convenient to just wear a crossbody like this. Case Defy offers incredible protection for your phone. Their new EcoShock technology for the new iPhone Impact series offers 20% more protection. It protects up to an 11.5 foot drop. It's five times the military standard and has been tested 130 times to ensure durability and protection. My own iPhone 11 ultra compostable case offers protection for up to 6.6 .6 feet. So let's go ahead and try a drop test. Now I'm up on the ledge so I can perform the drop test. I would say this is about six and a half foot up in the air. So let's go ahead and try it. Amazing, look at that. Absolutely no cracks in the screen and no issues with the case whatsoever. So if you love your phone as much as I do and want to protect it to the max, and you also want to dress it up with these beautiful and meaningful designs, go ahead and check out Casetify today. Go to casetify.com slash semidecoco for 15% off your order. Welcome everyone to this video. Today we are joined by my sister. She came to visit for a week and a half or so. So I decided I would choose her as my model. And we're going to do a very tingly and relaxing massage. We're going to start off with an oil massage and then we'll move on to some fire cupping. And I've never done fire cupping on my channel, so I really hope that you all like it. 
know that it is very deeply relaxing for you. So I wanted to talk a little bit about fire cupping and its origins. So the specific way of fire cupping that I was taught was based in traditional Chinese medicine. Now many cultures around the world use fire cupping, especially those in Eastern and Southern Asia, Southeast and Southwest. And I'm sure many more places that I don't even know about. But the type of fire cupping that we're doing today is based from China. And um, I'm sure there are many different ways to cup as well in China. And this is probably more of a standard way that is taught in the West. So essentially, I will be using these cups. These are cups that are used with fire, or sometimes you can do medicinal cupping as well. But the fire is used to create the suction. It will take out some of the oxygen from the cup and create the necessary suction to pull on the skin, the fascia, the muscle, all of the tissue to create the desired effect. And the sizes I have, I have size number 10 and size number 3 right here. I realize now that I should probably buy some cups that are in between sizes because as you can see the small cup is very small compared to the larger cup but it'll do for this session. I also have size 4 here which is slightly larger than size 3. The reason why we use different sizes is because the small ones are used for the muscles that are more delicate and smaller, let's say in the, of the upper back and of the neck, and the larger ones can be used for, let's say, uh, the latissimus dorsi down here, or perhaps... Hmm, you know, I wonder if we could also use it kind of on the trapezius, maybe down here. I'd feel more comfortable using it down here on the lumbar, where we have larger muscles. But anyway, we'll see what feels best for you and go from there. I'm going to start off this massage by applying some grapeseed oil. I specifically chose grapeseed oil for today because it is a non-flammable oil. It's very safe to use when it comes to fire cupping. We want to have the least risk possible of any kinds of burns. And when I practice this fire cupping, I'll make sure to um, I'll make sure to keep the fire in the cup for a shorter period of time. And if we need to do the suction a few times to get the desired effect, we can do that.
So now I'm just warming up your muscles, getting it ready for the fire cupping session. We're going to warm it up so that it, they, this, the tissue. So we're going to warm your tissues up so that they are more receptive to the treatment. So I'm just scooping the trapezius muscle here. There we go. Are there any areas of your back that I should pay special attention to? I don't think so. Okay, so I'll just figure it out based on what I'm palpating. I'm noticing that there is a knot right here. Okay. On this side as well. This tends to be a trouble spot for a lot of people. I'll just do some thumb kneading and try to loosen up this area. But we can also use one of the small cups to apply some suction. So I want to talk a little bit about what fire cupping actually does for the muscles or for the tissue in general. And it can do a number of things. It can help to expel pathogens. And so in traditional Chinese medicine, we think of pathogens as dampness or wind or cold, sometimes even heat. If you have too much heat, you can end up creating um, an imbalance in your body. Too much wind heat. Right now with us approaching winter and the transition, the fall transition, we are experiencing a lot more wind, a lot more rain as well. So especially vulnerable for having these two elements enter into our body, especially when we're accustomed to you know, wearing very little in the summer, wearing a t-shirt and shorts, and not really thinking about the potential damage that wind and a lot of rain in this colder weather can do to the body. It can certainly make us more susceptible to infection because it really reduces our immune function. So fire cupping can actually help to kind of suck the wind and the, the cold and the dampness out of the body. It can help a lot with pain relief. So in traditional Chinese medicine theory, we think that pain is caused by an obstruction of one of the one of the vital um, fluids. So it can be an obstruction of the qi, an obstruction of the blood we call blood stagnation or another thing could be cold. Cold tends to contract things. It can contract the muscles, make them really tight and tense and that can be a source of pain. So it's good to 
be mindful of all of these different causes. The great thing is fire cupping can actually help to relieve this. And I do believe that the fire element itself can help with a cold. Although you'll find that it's not necessarily hot in itself, but we are still utilizing the element of fire, so there is, I believe, some aid in expelling cold. I hear some cats outside. They're meowing. a lot of wild cats on this farm. The ones that we've been taking care of are six wild cats, a mother and five kittens, and they're very, very cute. It's been such a joy watching them grow up and watching them learn all kinds of skills. Turn your head, okay? we have all your muscles nice and warm. I'm going to just cover it up a little bit just for now because I don't want the heat to escape. Now that we've increased the circulation, brought it to the surface, let's just hold that in there. And meanwhile, I am going to light a few candles. a bit more of this massage oil. Just 
so it's easier to slide the cups later. right here. So we'll use some smaller cups. Actually, just test that and see if yeah, that looks good. Okay. Alright. So we're going to be using these hemostats to pick up the and swabs. It's important that we use these as a safety mechanism to be able to keep that swab in place and not let it fall. little bit of this alcohol. I'm going to add a little bit in this cup first. Okay. And you want to douse it in the alcohol, but not too much that it's dripping. That's the last thing you want. Okay. Now I'm going to grab one of these small cups. I'm going to apply, I'm going to put um, the cotton swab in the fire. And then we're going to just do a quick and then apply it right away. So hopefully that works well. So let's see if that is enough suction. Nope, we're going to have to just do it again. A little bit of suction there, so we'll just apply that. Okay, next one. There we go. Oh. So I am leaning on the cautious side, so I'm actually just going to. There we go. Oh. Sorry, shit, it's not working. <laughs> I'm going to have to go a little bit faster. There we go, that's a nice suction right there. And then, let's just start with those two. I might have to redo that. Oh no, this one's actually just fine. And let me add one on the bottom. Oh, this one's running out. We will start with just these two. How does that feel? Just going to slide it back and forth. Slowly. This 
this one I didn't add it quite as fast as that one so I'm going to have to redo that but in the meantime I'm just going to slide this one back and forth a little bit and you're definitely going to bruise here I can already see the bruise forming hope that's okay So, when it comes to fire cupping, or cupping in general, we by creating superficial inflammation at the surface, we're going to help to relieve some of that deeper inflammation. So, I'm just going to apply those two once again, and then I'm going to try to apply two more on the bottom. Okay. All right. And now the lower one. Is that really strong? No, I just pressed. Okay. There we go. Okay. I'm just gonna start with those. on these large ones is actually really good. Better than the, all oh, the small ones are doing pretty well too actually. So with the fire cupping, we'll find that we're actually creating stagnation at the surface. And by doing so, we're pulling toxins and Again, those pathogens that I mentioned earlier, wind, cold, and damp to the surface and allowing our bodies to be able to release them through sweat. I'm going to let these two do their work and I'm going to apply some small ones kind of along over here sort of the erector spinae but also a bit of the rhomboids I'm just going to apply one here and one here and maybe two more small ones here suction, okay? Okay. So we're going to proceed with the small cups. Get the alcohol, make sure it's not dripping. Looks good. And then we're going to apply it along the rector spinae. So, two over 
over there and I'll just apply two here as well start moving the larger ones. This way I can get to some more of your lower lumbar. I'm going to have to apply a little bit more oil in that region. in this region. This lower lumbar region can also help with menstruation if we have liver chi stagnation which often causes painful periods, dysmenorrhea. Applying cups here can help. imagine it would also help with the kidneys since they're in this area. Okay. <laughs> I'm just releasing a little bit of suction uh, from the cups. <laughs> we can slide it better. There we go. Very good. Okay, great. There's only a bit of suction left there, but we'll leave it. This one's I think is coming off. Oh no, it's fine. We'll see if it, go, if it wants to come off, it wants to come off and that's totally okay. Let's apply some more oil. Good. Just 
especially if you sit at your desk all day, this is really good for loosening up any tight muscles in this area. Targeting the trapezius and the rhomboid and the rectus spinae. Some of the levator scapulae up here. Now that I think about it, I have actually featured cupping on my channel. It was with both Theodore and Rachel. But I never actually did any cupping myself. Realizing it really is an amazing tool. Those sound like the kittens, not so much the, the mommy cat. I'm surprised this large one is still on. Doesn't look like your bruises will be too bad. of doing a general massage of these all these muscles here so we can move into the latissimus dorsi and the obliques here oops there we go and then there were two
can be really beneficial for any lower back pain. It's a little bit scary for your first time. But, uh, that was really well done. I'm just going to cover it up. to encourage your body to sweat, so let's keep it nice and warm and toasty. As I, as we're ending this massage, that it's been almost three years since we started this channel, and I still remember the first massage video I ever did with my sister. And it's amazing to think of the whole journey and everything we've done, and all the people that we've been able to meet and and to serve. I feel really grateful. I remember when we did our first massage video. It was the video got demonetized, and which was really discouraging. And I thought, okay, I'm never doing massage again, but many of you commented on that video and said that you really enjoyed it, so we tried again and it just hit off, and I'm really glad that we took that leap of faith and just went for it. grateful for my family to be by my side and always offer themselves as channels for the relaxation of all of you watching. Now you can hear the rain pouring down. As we move into the night, Everyone watching, please be careful out there and 
stay safe, take care of yourself and your loved ones, and make time to be with yourself and with everyone that you care deeply about. Embrace every moment and allow yourself to allow your authentic self to come forward because at the end of the day when we're at our most vulnerable that's our deepest expression of ourselves our most important Make sure to take time to breathe throughout the day. It's something I forget. So I'll just breathe. Take the time to just melt into your senses, into the into your sensations, however subtle they are. For that's where you find life. slowing down and just looking at the world around you, smelling it, hearing it, feeling it. Stepping out of your mind and just into a state of being. Being with your environment, being with yourself. Yeah, these are just, I think, reminders for myself, especially. <laughs> so I'd like to share them with you too, in case something that you've forgotten about. Thank you and good night. Sending love to all of you. And